Hi, my friend, it's Pat Sloan, and it is Fall Frolic, and we are on block four. I have my three blocks up here and the settings, uh, sort of square and squares that I'm working on. And here is our block. Ta-da! So we are going to celebrate back to school. Fall means back to school for so many of us. Even though during the pandemic, school was, I'm sure, crazy. And I know in a lot of places, it's still not regular school yet for everybody. Uh, but we can still celebrate that back to school is uh, something we do in the fall. That's kind of a tradition. And I just have great memories of being so excited to go back to school and see all my friends. Because you don't get to see all of your friends in the summer. You know, they didn't always live near me or our schedules didn't work out or you're just their friends that you weren't as close to, but you, you know, you saw them at school. So I loved going back to school. So here's our fall frolic block. There's the chart, got some half square triangles. And if this make a super cute, fast table runner with some fabrics that you love, if you need a fall table runner, you could just do three of them and whip up, whip that up really quick. So I'm going to tell you about the colors that I did. Before I do that, you can see on the wall here, because we're going to go to the other side of the table, I have got uh, both the wreaths that I'm working on and uh, the, the scrap ones. I finished those scrap ones. But I'll have to show you. Like, look at this. What was I thinking? So somehow, somehow, somewhere in here, my seams were a little too big and I ended up this big thing like I, I know it was late at night and I was like okay I'm just going to deal with that in the morning so that's what I'll be doing today okay meet you on the other side our back to school block is another one that would be great for doing like a whole quilt where you did a whole lot of different colorations which means there's a lot of options you could go so many different ways with this let me show you the different combinations i looked at before i decided on what i would go with so i've got them laid out down here okay so many options here is the stack for the blocks. Uh, I also am going to use this, but I'm starting to think I need to do a couple of the blocks in the light, you know, the background. But that also means, before we look at the fabrics there, I need to cut all of these sashings so that I have all of that done for out of the background fabric. And then whatever's left, I can use in blocks. And that I think is what I'll do today as well. So I have that done and out of the way. And I'll just put it, I have a bag in here. Whoops, I have a bag in here with stuff at the backing. I'll put it in there. Okay, so that's the background. So what kind of combinations what can we have? So I f first, let's look at this one. I thought about bringing pink in for one of the blocks. And based on the different fabrics, I could do pink. I did the, put the black because I think this is really, really stunning. This would be like a, such a cool block. But I could also do the red, like the red points, red and pink uh, out here, you know, these guys, and then a pink center. So that would be one way to go. Okay, then I thought, well, maybe I could bring the teals in now. No red in this one. I'll use that really pretty gray that came in a the line, then use the darker teal so they have a really good contrast there. And then this, I love this piece of fabric. I love it so much in both the colorways. There's an, it comes in orange too. Maybe it's another one, but I love it. It doesn't um, have enough contrast with like, if I were to put it against the gray, I think it doesn't have as much pack, you know, punch. See, they kind of blend together. So definitely these two. So I'm kind of loving that one a lot. But then here's teal and brown, which is a classic combination. And then if I had, remember the white would be here, have red in the center. That would be a really nice combination. I could take that teal out and just do the orange uh, that we used before with the brown. That's a good combination. Okay, one more set. Here I have this sort of, it's a, it's a green, but it's really brown. Really, really dark, dark olive. So that's nice because it gives that high contrast. I got a nice pop against the green here if I wanted to use the green. But let's say I wanted to use it against yellow. So it would have a great pop against the yellow too. Okay, so this is not my favorite combo. 
right now for this block. I'm loving all the other ones. So I'm like thinking, oh, I might just go away from having the red. And these two are my favorites. Either, or if I did this one, no. The black, the red, and the pink. Or I'm really leaning towards having these teals. Because I haven't used any pink yet. But I haven't used, I have used teal a little bit. So I'm still debating whether the pink's even going to come in here. Maybe I need to do one with a block that has like a little touch of pink down the road. So I think I'm going to go with this guy. I'm going to go ahead and use the AccuQuilt with the two and a half inch square die. This is the die I've been using because it's got all kinds of several sizes on it. So I'm going to use the Go Me. I just sort of pick this thing is super light. Just pick it up, bring it over. Of course, it's, it's closed like that. Bring it over from my table, put it down. Now, what I did was to get a more, um, a, you know, economical size, so I'm not wasting a lot of fabric. I sort of put my ruler on top of here, and I can go about three by three and a half, and that will cut a square that fits over a rectangle that fits over there. So I've got. I've got two sets. I do them right sides together and I cut that three by three and a half. So this will do four, which is one quadrant. So I need four sets of those. And then I just zip them through. So I'll show you, put the plastic on top and just crank the handle as soon as it starts to grip. Just go all the way through. Now, if I'm on the electric one, I would just press the button and it would feed through automatically. So if you have problems with your arms or whatever, your hands and you can't crank, get the electric one. And then you slide this off. Everybody keeps telling me the tips for that. There we go. So I have, here's one set and you can see the corners, the, um, the little dog ears are already cut off. And then here is the other set. Okay, so I have, now this is one, but these are make one quadrant, and this is the waist. So you could be even more frugal if you wanted to, but this is frugal enough for me. I want to be sure that I'm not, you know, that I got it on there properly. So this is the waist, and now I just need to do the rest of the sets, and I'll sew that block up. The back to school block in the teal with the gray, um, I really like it. I like a lot of those options. That's why I said it would be so fun. You know, these are the kind of blocks that you could do a scrappy quilt and you could just do all kinds of combinations or just take a fabric line because it's coordinated, do all kinds of combinations. That'd be really fun. All right, I have a fabric line that I have to show you. It's got coffee cups on it and they're big coffee cups. It is so, so cute. So this is, uh, this is it. Link is down below and at my website today to this coffee fabric. Look, 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 look. They're <laughs> giant, giant coffee cups. I just love it. I don't know. I like things that are oversized and there's polka dots. So this is Jan Weckler from um, Riley Blake. Let me just show you the other things that are in here because the cute factor is just, I don't know, over the top for me, over the top. So there's coffee beans. Look at that. I like these coffee beans. I think they're pretty nice. Pretty good ones. Get this stuff out of the out of the way. Okay, we also have a big dot. So there's I had to get some more of that, extra of that. Then black because this is this is going to be the backing of something coming in the future. So there it is on black. So you saw it on aqua. Like ah, oh, this is so good. Look at all the word text behind there. You can really see that on the black. I did get a little bit of red to go with it. Just a pop of red in the right red color. But look at this. These next two things are super fabulous. They are uh, placemats. So here's placemats. It's got, what is it, got like four. I'm just going to hold it up. I think that would be easier. Ah, oh, let me just get this camera. Okay. <laughs> All right, here's the placemats. So you get six. No, one, two, three, yeah, six. Six placemats. So there's the coffee cups, the, the old-fashioned coffee pots. Look at the red one. Look at that. 
Ah, oh, so gorgeous. I like the little scallops on the top. All right, so these are, these are fun. I'm gonna make these up. But I have to show you this one, and I'm not really even sure what to do with this, but it's oversized and it is fun, and I think it would be great to do on the back of something, like a lap quilt. Look, <laughs> it is a whole piece. I mean, it is a whole backing. The, the coffee shop with all the sayings, like all of the drinks. There's all the drinks. Oh my goodness. Cute, cute, cute. The bottom is the coffee pot. Oh, this is like, <laughs> so, ah, so darling. Now, I have to tell you that in, in the few coming soon, probably right at the beginning of the year, I will be doing something with Fat Quarter Shop that you will seeing. I'm gonna use a jelly roll of this fabric and it's a free pattern that'll be coming out using a jelly roll. And so that's my fabric of choice, but I don't know. I just, I just think maybe I need to do a quilt top, maybe get out aquas and blacks and do maybe just an easy piece block and then put this on the backing, make it double-sided. You know, I just love those fun things. They're just over the top and make such a cool statement, make everything, make just make things fun. That's what I like. That's what I like about it. Okay, another uh, thing I wanted to tell you about is the Giving Tree at the Virginia Quilt Museum is still active. We talked about this um, in October, beginning of October, and we donated to the Giving Tree in, in the name of my mother-in-law, Greg's mom, Madge Sloan. And so here is a picture of the ornament on the tree. So you can give an amount in their honor. They can, and then they'll um, put their name on the ornament. They have a small tree right now up at the uh, desk, the checkout desk in the museum shop, but they're going to put up a full size tree and hope that we can fill it with, uh, you know, ornaments to honor people. I know a few of you have written me and said that you have done this as well since I mentioned it. You honored your friend uh, or family member who was and is a quilter. So that is something that you can do if you want to give a gift or um, just, uh, be supporting the museum in that way. It's super fun. I'm so excited we did that in Madge's name. Uh, and the link is down below and at my website today for that. Okay, you are going to be making, where is it? Oh, here it is. You're gonna be making your uh, back to school block. And if you've not started the settings, I would recommend maybe starting them because things start to get busy at the end of the year for everybody. And it's nice if you have all of this done uh, and, and set, you know, so that you can just start putting blocks together if you want. Like I figure after six blocks, since there's only nine at six blocks, I'm going to start the setting and then the other three will go at the end and then I can color coordinate what I want them to be. Whoops, <laughs> these, my stack is getting big. I have these to do yet. Okay, I love you, <laughs> see you online.